Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Removal Sanity, and today I'm reviewing Gory Cuddly Carnage on the Series X, developed by Angry Demon Studios and published by Wired Productions. So what is Gory Cuddly Carnage? Gory Cuddly Carnage is a third person hoverboard hack and slash platformer with gore and stunts aplenty. The premise is you play as Gory, a cute ginger tabby cat along with his deadly but wisecracking sentient hoverboard, Frank, and Moreau's AI companion, Chip, to slay the evil adorable army with the most lethal and deadly combos. The game boasts various difficulty settings, adult humour, parkour skills, horrific enemies, excessive gore and a large number of unlockable costumes, skins and weapons. First up is accessibility. With regards to accessibility, there's a vast swathe of options available for all. Button remapping, subtitle options, colour blind options, aim assist and more. Sound options are basic, so should you have hearing issues, this may not be the game for you. Next is gameplay. Fueled by an insatiable demand, a corporation called Cool Toys Inc. created Ultra Pets. The ultimate companions that never hunger, never require bathroom breaks and are impervious to the ravages of time. However, a mutation has transformed these perfect pets into twisted toys straight from your nightmares, hell-bent on wiping out mankind. With the help of your creator stroke owner, you eye cute colourful tabby cat, a sentient hoverboard and a morose AI companion manage to escape Earth in a ship at the start of the toy takeover. Many months later, an attack forces you back on Earth to see the devastation that has taken place. But in doing so, you find that your creator is still alive and that you can stop this by completing her work in building the ultimate weapon. From the moment you start, the game's feel is that of something straight out of the early 2000s, akin to that of the film Gremlins, with its adult humour, dark mutilated aesthetics and cute protagonist. In an era of gaming that is pushing a more stale and safe selection of products, these developers have gone all out in the opposite direction. Back on Earth, it's time to learn the basics of combat and movement, which is a superb blend of Tony Hawk and Lollipop Chainsaw. You learn to do some amazingly violent combos whilst grinding out and doing tricks to maintain your energy stroke health, ensuring that you do more devastating power attacks. The combination of these attacks keeps the game moving forward at a fast pace that never feels too grindy or boring as you tear apart waves of horrific enemies. You may ask why bother in keeping that momentum? Well, like many games from the early 2000s era, by doing so you rack up a high score, which at the end provides you with a star rating to keep that challenge alive. Making your way through the levels, you soon come across shops in which you can augment your cat with more damaging weapons, larger health pool, and a plethora of character customizations. To purchase said elements is simple and effective. Find cash around the levels and kill vast swathes of enemies before spending these rewards at the shops, which is within the levels or your home base. Now you may be forgiven that this is just a hack and slash game, but there's also core puzzle mechanics added in as well that will need your skill and patience to resolve. There is nothing here too taxing so as to hinder the joy of slaughtering unicorns in variously nasty ways. Overall, the joy of this game is its simplicity and adult themed humour, drenched in a ton load of blood and guts. It's been built to enjoy and thrall, which it does in numerous ways. Next up is graphics. The visual style is perfect for a future apocalyptic setting, with copious amounts of bright neon bursting through the screen. The levels are all a combination of childhood memories and playthings that have been corrupted and twisted from a deviant's mind. Anything from vibrant blocky arcade arenas to bright green toxic sewage locations push the visuals to new depths. You'll cross these locations by grinding across vibrant neon billboards or jumping across movable platforms in a bid to get to the next area before being hit with a swathe of horrible unicorns gunning for your death. Speaking of the unicorns, the game continually throws new twisted variations of these enemy types at you to ensure you are never bored. Some of these monstrosities may have shields that can only be broken with a hammer attack. 
Others are literally globs of electrical goo that can only be damaged by an area effect attack or rocket attacks. The bigger types need hit and run tactics to try and whittle down their health before a strong finishing move. Knowing when and where to use your varied attacks and whom to use none keeps the action high. Gory and their allies are adorable and a stark contrast to the enemies they face, which are brutal with bosses taking things to even more disturbing levels. They range from uncanny to outright horrifying and disgusting. Thankfully, Gory and his allies are quite adorable, which gives that stark contrast when battling those enemies. From what I could tell, there was no tearing or frame skips, and everything was smooth as butter. But I did have the odd delay with some of my button presses, nothing significant, and probably something that will be patched later on. Finally, it's sound. The game has very adult themed voice work, with its dialogue enjoyably absurd with Frank throwing out curse words almost every other sentence, and Chip providing a monotonous rebuttal showcasing depressed dread that akin to the Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy robot Marvin. Combat sounds are also pushed to the forefront with beefy slices, explosions and gunfire at the top of the sound chain, regardless of the superb beat that blasts away. The music also equally excels as it blends those explosions, screams and bar riding into one united chorus. To go even further, there are levels that the music is even tied directly into the gameplay. The lyrics of one of the songs blast out slime as you make your way through said slime enclosures. It's this seamless that encapsulates the whole game's ethos that showcases off its true intent in being a thoroughly enjoyable experience first and foremost. And this leads me on to the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of avoid, on sale, great purchase and must own. My rating for gory, cuddly carnage is a must own. This is a perfect example of making a fun game for the sake of it and showcasing it to the world. From the moment I picked it up, I just found myself smiling and enjoying the silly carnage on display. The game is currently priced on Xbox at £17.99, or approximately $22, and depending on your skill and patience would give you well over 15 plus hours worth of gameplay. Combine this with unlockable costumes, skins, secrets and challenges, and you can easily add another 10 plus hours to the mix. If you are into twisted takes on childhood toys, cute cats, blood, carnage and adult humour, this is a must. All hail Death Kitty and his foul mouth hoverboard. Well ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I do hope you like this review and if you do, please like, share and subscribe if you so wish. And if you would like to put some notes or even just a comment in the comment section, I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming and I'll see you all again soon.